What's good guys, it's your man Chef from Off The Dome back in with another video. Today we're talking about the three mistakes Lil Pump made that possibly caused his fall off. Before the video starts, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. We got new videos coming for you every single day. And we just did one with Disney Plus, that's my last video I just did. This one's on Lil Pump. And I think it's something that people really don't understand, but I'm going to break it down from. The first mistake he made was signing to the Lights Global and Warner Brothers, period. When you're a mega... When you're, when you're a big social media platform artist like Lil Pump or Instagram and Snapchat, he could have TikTok blew up against it. He probably was already on Musical.ly before it became TikTok. He could have went on TikTok. The dude would have made money off regardless. He already made money off social media. He didn't need this music deal. He really didn't. I think Gucci Gang still would have blew up organically if he would have just made a video too. I think people would still vibe with it. Because when they first blew up, first of all, Gucci Gang didn't get played on the radio like that in the first place. So he didn't need a label for that. He already had a, he could have got a screaming deal, no doubt. Instagram would have definitely flocked on to it. And four, as you see now with his album sales or whatnot, it's like he might as well just been a social media celebrity in the first place. His music doesn't move units like he used to only two years ago. So that's his first thing, signed to a major label. It may have given him millions of dollars, but in the long term, Will he get a return on what the label have put out to him? And you know if you don't put something out for them, the money stuff comes in. And I hope he's doing wise things with his money. Number two, his second mistake was basically calling people, you know, calling him a chink in a music video for the um, Butterfly Doves. You know, a lot of Asians don't find it offensive. But, you know, in America, for some reason, white people found everything offensive that's not offensive to minorities. So... It was a huge backlash. There was a couple of Asian celebrities and a couple of Asian fans that came out and said that. I don't think Asians listen to Lil Pump like that. Like, I don't think they really were that upset. Because when other people said that word, nobody really came out against it. And so when you say something about Jews, Asians, Blacks, and Hispanics, it's always something like the Jewish Money Line on 21 Savages album, which wasn't even negative. But when Lil Baby said, you know, call me Jewish like it's voodoo, nobody said anything about that. So people just miss certain things. That's nitpicking. But this one nitpick caused his single to be delayed by a month and a half. And Butterfly Dose was re-released in February when it was supposed to be released in December, I believe, of 20, 2018. So he could have followed up that single right after I Love It when it was still on the charts. And it might have did decently. But since Butterfly Dose was released two months later after that controversy, now Little Pump is forced to release that single right before he releases his album. That single debuted at like number 88 on the Hot 100. It just now went gold this month. So it took that long to go gold. When Gucci Gang went gold in a month. And even um, it with platinum in less time than that. So he's in some deep trouble. And I love it. It was already off the chart. He didn't capitalize on that. And it just made it. It was a big kerfuffle, man. And his third biggest mistake was basically releasing the album at all this year. I think Lil Pump should have went ahead and deal with other rappers do when they know this stuff sucks. He didn't go ahead and just list a, another commercial mixtape. Just release one. That way you can excuse your poor sales numbers. I think it would be better for him to release an EP or mixtape, something short. Nobody needed an 11 full length album for Lil Pump. Nobody needed the content he was making. He has no substance in his content. That's another problem. So the third problem is him not releasing a mixtape to hype it up or have a substance. I know you're not going to try to pretend to be someone deep. But try to get better at your rhymes and flows and what you're doing. Just to, ooh, ooh, yeah, my mama. You did all that, ooh, uh, flexing. My girl, I'll take meds with me. I got cars, whips. You know, he gets tiresome after a while. And his fans start to lose him. Okay, you gotta remember his fan base are basically tweens and teenagers and maybe some young adults. But I don't know any 25 year old that's bumping Lil Pump. So if you're over the age of probably 17, you're not listening to Lil Pump. So they're already, I wanna say, it dwindles your. Fan base for album sales because you gotta remember Justin Bieber and Taylor Swift and even Drake and Nick Nas when they pandered the children, tweens, their sales went up because their parents bought or they have Apple accounts. So I'm not saying that the parents didn't give these kids Apple cards to come buy Lil Pump singles and albums. I just don't think they did it. They honestly felt like Lil Pump's funny on Instagram, but I'm not trying to listen to that man rap at all. That's what they're basically saying. So let me know in the comments section what you think. Do you think Lil Pump? Made a big mistake by even signing to a record label, calling Asian people chinks, and um, releasing an album too soon? Or do you think, hey, it was going to happen regardless? I think his career would be a lot bigger if he didn't mess up on Butterfly Doors and one if he didn't sign to Warner Brothers or Lights Global. That's my opinion. Let me know if you liked the video. Make sure you like the video if you do like it. 
And make sure you subscribe because subscriber day keeps YouTube from taking my channel away. It's your man Chef from Off the Dome. I'm out. See you next time.